and welcome to the Crew Autonomous Systems umbrella configuration. This section is just to configure the initial build and the, and the initial umbrella integration. So we start off with integrating our AD server with uh, umbrella pointing uh, towards umbrella public DNS servers as folders. We then look at AD integration with the roaming client installed on endpoints. And then finally, we download and install the AD connector, which is used to manage multiple uh, Active Directory domains. So the first thing we've got to do is enable our network to use Umbrella as its uh, public DNS servers. So I'm currently logged into my, my uh, DNS server. It's also my AD server. Uh, <clears throat> if we was to do an initial test, to check that it's compatible with Umbrella, we'd go to welcome.umbrella.com and it should be green, but as you can see, it's red, which means that currently my uh, server's, server is not using Umbrella as its public DNS server. So we can change that. So if we log into Umbrella and have a little look around, uh, the first step we need to do is permit our public IP from our server into Umbrella uh, so that Umbrella starts accepting tra DNS traffic from, from our network. Bear with a second, it's a little bit slow. So to do that, we go to departments, deployment, sorry, networks, click on the add button. Add our network. IPv4 only. Can we save? So our network's now added. So the next step is to uh, configure the, the umbrella public DNS servers as forwarders within our DNS infrastructure. So if we go into server manager, roles, DNS server, DNS AD, click on properties, go to folders delete that one let's add to bear with me for two seconds or I get the folder address message Can't be any other. <clears throat> can't be any other DNS forwarders on here, apart from these two, because of the round robin nature. Uh, you end up having missed missed requests going to others. So if you say you had, if you had eight eight eight, so if you had <clears throat> eight 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 here, for instance, it would round robin one two and then one to Google. Now that that wouldn't be very good because you'd be missing and. Uh, it, 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 the solution wouldn't work as expected. Then we save the settings. We want to flush the cache. Now, if we shut this browser and we put a new one up should hopefully be green. There we go. And we are now connected to Umbrella. 
Next, we're going to install the Umbrella roaming client onto our workstation. So if we minimize our server and we open up our workstation, which is here, <coughs> and I'll just see if this is on there. So we're going to install the the Umbrella client roaming client, which is a small folder which sits on the endpoint. Uh, it sends encrypted DNS requests with embedded identity information directly to Umbrella on any network and gracefully handles local DNS requests. The client also enforces at the IP layer. So it's an extra layer of security. So there's two options we can use with this. We can either install the, the, the Umbrella roaming client itself, or if your users already have any connect, uh, we can also install an additional module, security module on that to achieve the same thing. So let's start off really first off by making sure that now our client is also using Umbrella as well as the server to, to, for, for public DNS. So we're, we'll do the same test. We'll go to welcome.umbrella.com, which I have saved here. And as we can see, we are definitely using Umbrella. Now we're going to add uh, the domain controller into Umbrella. We might as well do it from this this uh, workstation. It doesn't matter which workstation you, you do it from. I have single sign-on configured, which is why I can go directly. Uh, but sometimes you might have a splash with your username and password if you haven't got single sign-on configured. So if we go to deployments, configuration, domain management, Going to configure a new domain. Add two just for fun. If we go core identities and roaming computers. So we now have this here, the jump up, which is what we're on at the moment. So now we can download the roaming client. That's, so the download the module profile is to add to it and any connect, which is already configured you know, on the, it's already installed on the endpoint, but we're going to go for the actual umbrella roaming client here. So we save this. Shouldn't take too long. Let's set it up. Let's check that it's been installed successfully. Still waiting. And as you can see, we're now protected with DNS IPv4. So the client is now connected. So if we refresh the umbrella page by clicking on the button again, Let's 
just refresh it. There we go. And now we see it's now protected and encrypted in the DNS layer. We can also click the arrow down to see more information. So we can see the operating system, the identity name, what what version of Umbrella is on there, and if it's protected. Now we'll open another tab just to make sure we're still connected. And then our next. And now, as you can see here, the default policy has been configured. So we're going to test if it will block us going to example malware domain.com. So we click on here, it should block us. And there you go. Now we're going to run a debug query to make sure that our client is actually uh, routing DNS traffic to Umbrella. So if we open a command prompt as administrator, and we do an NS lookup, type in text, oops, uh, and debug. And as you can see, is if so that shows that being used that uh, umbrella is being used. Next, we're going to integrate AD into Umbrella by creating an AD connector so that we can we can uh, use user identity. So we need to drop out of our jump box again, go straight back into our domain controller. <coughs> First off, we create a new user. To expire. Create that user now. Just make sure he's got the correct uh, add him to a group. So we want to add him to. And we also want to add him to we only to make controllers. So let's now click into umbrella and now we configure AD within umbrella. So 
So now we navigate to deployments, configuration, sites and active directory. Click on this, and we have to click on the download components. So it should be Windows Domain Controller. Done, and then I can click on this, execute that. Right, okay, so let's see if I can run this now with. Go to this folder. Okay, use the use the use the Linux C script. Anything. Nine and it's as simple as that. This should now be a uh, should be in, integrated with Umbrella as an AV controller. So now. If we go to deployments, configuration, sites and active directory again. So it says that it's just been run. I think we're going to have to wait a little while before it and come back to it. Let's see if it's going to come up. The state should turn green. Next, we're going to install the Umbrella AD connector, which is used to monitor more than one domain controller. It, uh, it listens to, to user and, and computer logins via the security event logs and enables IP to user and IP to computer mappings on the virtual appliances. It synchronizes user to group computer to group and group to group memberships with Umbrella and allows you to create and enforce group based settings on view user, computer and group based reports. The co connector helps import your Active Directory users, groups and computers to provide these mappings and other AD objects such as OUs are not important. So let's get started with uh, installing this. <coughs> 